Welcome to CivilNet. My guests today are Seva Kohanian and Natalie Kasabian. They are the producers of the movie Searching. The movie tells the story of a father, David Kim, who's investigating on the disappearance of his daughter. The media considered the, fir- the movie as the first Hollywood thriller headlined by an Asian American actor. This time my guests are not in Armenia, they are far. Uh, Sevak is in Los Angeles and Natalie in Winnipeg in Canada. Sevak and Natalie, welcome. Hello. Hi, this is so good to be here. Thank you for having us. All right, so your movie has been recently screened in TUMO, the Center for Creative Technologies in Armenia. TUMO is a place mainly made for young people. It gives the opportunity to teenagers to um, develop their ID skills. Um, How was the movie welcomed? I think it was welcomed really well. Uh, You know, I was a workshop leader at TUMO in 2016, and I taught a class on filmmaking. And while I was, you know, at TUMO, we were at the beginning stages of making the film Searching. So Natalie was in L.A., I was in Yerevan, and we were talking every night. I wouldn't go to sleep. (laughs) I would have to be talking to them on the phone. And I was able to share a lot of those experiences with my students at TUMO. And it it was incredible to be able to be back at TUMO two years later, showing the movie that they've been hearing about and having an incredible response from the audience. It was really cool. I have a lot of love for TUMO. Yeah, they did. We did a Q&A after. We actually Skyped in. So Sevak was in Canada with me, and we both Skyped in from our office for our next movie. And it was really cool. We, had, we got a live Q&A with, with everyone in Armenia. It was pretty awesome. And it was kind of perfect because the movie takes place on computers. So the, the fact that we were there via a computer, I yeah. think everybody appreciated the fact. It was very fitting. <laughs> So the movie was shot in 13 days from the point of view of electronic devices such as smartphones and cameras and computers. Um, You produced a movie entirely in the zeitgeist. Um, Would you describe the movie as a forerunner in the movie industry? Totally. Um, I'll I'll start now. You should continue. You know, for us, the movie like you said, take place on smartphones, devices, but the way we think of it as a team, first and foremost, it is a regular cinematic movie, and specifically one that we wanted to make sure would be really emotional. We, Our goal with the film was that within the first five minutes, audiences would be so connected with these characters that they would forget that what they're watching is taking place on screens, and I, and I feel like we might have accomplished that. And that, now do you want to add to that or? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, you know, for a lot of people have asked, like, would, would we make another movie on screens? And like, is this the future of cinema? Um, and, you know, we would say we're, we're done with screen movies. It's like you mentioned, it took um, it took over two years to put this thing together. We shot it in, in only 13 days, despite the fact that there's, you know, huge crowd scenes. There's a car chase without spoiling anything for people who haven't seen it. But, you know, we shot in 13 days, but we did spend over a year editing it, um, which is really unusual, even for a big studio film. And and we definitely were not a big studio film at the time that we made it. So for us, we're like, we're done with screens. We're going to do just a normal live action movie. Um, but we had an incredible experience making this and, and uh, wouldn't, wouldn't take that back or change it for anything. Searching is considered by the media, as I said, as a first mainstream Hollywood thriller headlined by an Asian American actor. But recently there was another movie entitled Crazy Rich Asians that tells the story of a rich family of Singapore. Uh, What distinguishes uh, the movies, the two movies? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take this one, Um, Seb. It's pretty pretty awesome that both movies came out in in August and people started calling it Asian August. Um, We, of course, you know, didn't know that when we were making the movie, but, um, you know, both movies obviously star Asian Americans, but I think they're really different in the sense that Crazy Rich Asians is um, very much about that identity and, um, you know, the the identity, the culture, and, um, you know, the difference between you know, Asians living in America and and Asians in, you know, in Asia. And so, you know, but for us, we wanted to make a movie that was just a thriller, that was just an entertaining movie that just so happens to star someone 
who who's diverse and you know we chose a Korean American cast but you know for searching the, the movie is not about that it's not about culture it's really just about a family and we really as filmmakers you know Sev and I are obviously Armenian our director is uh, Indian American and we just really wanted to put someone who's diverse on screen you know someone who 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 would look like you know someone in, in one of our families um, and so for us, it wasn't about making a story about diversity. Those movies exist. You know, there's Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, I mean, Sevak has made a movie called Crude Bale Station, which is very much about that experience. But this is just an, a, a thriller, and it just so happens to be starring uh, a diverse cast. Yeah, and, and just one more thing to add to that. We, um, you know, being Armenian-American, Natalie and I, and again, our partner is Indian and our entire crew on searching, we were so diverse that whenever we would go to a location, people would ask us, are you guys are United Nations. <laughs> our goal, you know, the movie that we're about to start shooting in Canada is gonna be about, um, is, gonna, is gonna feature somebody who has a disability. And our, we're hoping that with our films that we can always tell entertaining movies that audiences can respond to, always kind of shed light on a community that isn't seen as much. And our third movie, we can tell you that we can tell you right now, is going to feature a large number of cast members, and one of the one of the main characters is going to be Armenian. So we're kind of working our way in that direction. Is this a way to normalize to mainstream diversity? Now you should get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's exactly that. It, you know, again, it's like we we grew up watching big movies, you know, big big thrillers, action movies you know, Mission Impossible, whatever. And it's it's always the same, you know, same type of person as a protagonist. So it was very much us just trying to tell a fun, entertaining story about a family and be able to put someone who's in there and, and is diverse. And that's it. And not comment about it. You know, the movie is not about their diversity. It's just about a family and they happen to be um, Asian American. So it's very much about trying to normalize it. Absolutely. So you mentioned the fact that you have another project in process, and that was my last question, actually. The searching, pro uh, the searching project is complete now, and I guess you both have another project in process. Um, so here is my question. Is there a chance to see one day in your movie another character, an Armenian character? So uh, we were saying that you know our goal as a team, when I say team, me and Natalie and our directing partner, Anish, is to just tell really cool, entertaining stories that audiences can enjoy. And at the same time, as you put it beautifully, Ani, we want to normalize marginalized people. Like, let's put an Asian, let's put a Korean American in, in our movie, even though none of us are Korean. Our next movie is going to feature somebody who has a disability. And beyond that, we want to kind of continue that trend. Our big movie that we cannot wait to make is our third movie together. And I can't talk about it exactly, but one of the main characters is going to be an Armenian woman. And it's kind of going to be our love letter to Armenian women who I think are, you know, the, the backbones of our Armenian community. And, you know, a lot of people ask us, like, do you guys want to make a movie about the Armenian side? And obviously, to help tell that story, even important to us, we want to tell the story of Armenia today, of the Armenia of the future, and, and, and show, you know, what we have become as, as people. We're not victims, we're survivors. And if we can incorporate our meaning characters to our movies in a very, you know, subtle, non-intrusive way, hopefully we can help change the perception of us as a people and only continue to, you know, do good by, do good by our society. Thank you both of you for this interview. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. This is so fun. Thank you for joining us and continue to follow us on civilnet.am.